Hello, today I wanted to talk about going through a breakup as a person with ADHD and you know how to manage this in a way that suits your needs and so that you don't end up committing arson by burning everything that they ever gave you. Yeah, let's let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome to the Busy Bee with ADHD podcast, a podcast about tools and strategies for ADHD all while laughing at my very dumb but plump ass. Haley Honeyman. I'm an ADHD coach and influencer with the goal of helping my fellow ADHD pals. Let's get into it. So before we get into the very educational side of this podcast, which I know you all love, I'd first like to talk shit about myself. <laughs> I want to tell you about the first time I ever went through a breakup and you know my first real heartbreak and what that was like for me as somebody that didn't know I had ADHD um, and how that kind of went down. So roll back to you know, 16, 17 year old Haley, I fell in love for the first time with a lovely gentleman named Spencer. Um, all good things to him, but he did break my heart significantly. <laughs> I fell for not only him, but also for his family. And I, you know, I was really excited about being in love for the first time, but it was a high school relationship. It's a very different type of love than an, a mature love that comes from, you know, experience and adulthood and all of these other things. And so, did we actually have a lot in common? No. Were we just excited to probably be just dating? Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. It happens. Um, but at the time, I was in probably one of the most insecure places of my life because, you know, I was 16 and I hated myself. Um, and that really led to the demise of the relationship because it caused me to be very jealous and I was anxious all the time. And that's no fun to be dealing with as a partner. So he broke my heart. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> You know, it really ended with me throwing everything he ever got me out my bedroom window with my mom and then having hot chocolate with her later. So that was fun. I did see his mom uh, only like last year. Yeah, I saw his mom last year. Still on good terms with, with them. Good terms with him now, so that's great. That was the last time I went through a breakup like that. All of my other ones have been very different. And I think it's important for me to explain that prior to talking about relationships so that you guys know, you know, what has formed my opinions. Um, the relationship after that one ended with us being really good friends. We were actually like super buddy buddy for a long time. Shout out to Chad man. So that was a completely different breakup. And then my most recent breakup was, you know, a wild ride. <laughs> that one ended with a an arrest. And so a lot of that breakup I was still filled with sadness and I was upset, but it wasn't really about the breakup itself. It was about the trauma that was related to it. So it was different. It was different. So, you know, when I give suggestions and ideas and I talk about breakups, I want you guys to know what I have gone through to form those opinions. Okay? So now you know. <laughs> so as we know, breakups suck ass for everyone, regardless of what, you know, disorders you struggle with. But I'm of the opinion that they can be worse to go through if you have ADHD. The reasons being that we often suffer from emotional dysregulation. Some places even state that emotional dysregulation is one of the core symptoms of ADHD, which you know is debatable, but I'm probably of the same opinion. Um, but we also are more likely to suffer from rejection sensitivity dysphoria. And those two things really come into play when we are fragile and going through a breakup. <laughs> so what I wanna do is I wanna break down what emotional dysregulation is, what rejection sensitivity dysphoria is, and then talk about how those things come into play with a breakup for an ADHD person, and then talk about you know what can we do about it. Because it's one thing to understand it, it's another thing to actually put it into practice, right? And if you're a person that's not going through a breakup right now, um, this is great information for the future. I'm hoping you don't go through a breakup, but if it happens, you might have better tools that way. So better to be prepared than not, right? Firstly, emotional dysregulation simplified by the company, quote, very well mind, says that it can be understood as, quote, an impaired ability to control your emotional response leading to extreme or overblown reactions that don't really fit the situation. Some of the key signs and symptoms include emotional reactions that seem out of sync with the cause, difficulty calming down even if you're aware that you're overreacting, low tolerance for frustration or annoyance, temperamental or prone to sudden outbursts, feeling completely overwhelmed by your emotions, 
difficulty refocusing your attention away from the emotion. And then next, rejection sensitivity dysphoria can be described as occurring when you experience an intense or overwhelming emotional sensitivity to criticism or rejection. It can be a learned emotional response or you may be genetically predisposed to it, AKA ADHD, baby. (laughs) So those are two very big terms and there's a good chance you have heard of them before, Um, but that was the Cliff Notes version of it. If you want more information on it, I would suggest going uh, and doing a little bit more research on them. Uh, But that's our understanding of those two things. So, Now, if we consider a breakup with those two added elements into the situation, that shit hurts way more, (laughs) so much more. (laughs) You may feel so completely emotionally overwhelmed by the situation that you shut down and isolate yourself completely. So that's no bueno. (laughs) Oftentimes through a breakup, my brain always goes to, you know, every possible way that I could resolve it um, and I'm sure you guys feel this as well is looking for the resolution even in times that there might not be one because you know there's no better dopamine hit than conflict resolution <laughs> as a side note I was the toxic partner that would purposely start fights and problems because I wanted to then have the conflict resolution like the conflict resolution hit the soul so good that I would do it on purpose like not I don't know not fully consciously aware that that's why I was doing it but like that's why I was doing it have I worked on this yes do I do that with my current partner no but hesitantly because there have been times I've done it and I'm working on it okay it's an active process it doesn't just change overnight all right all right sometimes with breakups it can be completely out of our control and there is absolutely nothing we could do to resolve the situation and I know that that is a very hard pill to swallow sometimes it's just not meant to be Ugh, I know that sucks but sometimes it's not <laughs> And I know that you know, it is not as easy as understanding that to actually follow through with it. You could be completely aware that there is no resolution, no way to fix things, but still try to seek resolution um, because you're so uncomfortable with your emotions and how severely you're feeling them. And that can be so taxing on your mentality that it can actually take a lot longer for you to move forward or move on or become able to start moving on because you're so drained from the emotions that you've gone through. So what's the solution to this? I mean, sometimes, and I truly say this, sometimes there isn't one. I know that that hurts to hear, but sometimes it will just suck for a while. There isn't anything actively that you can do, but sometimes there is a resolution or solution but it doesn't come from, you know, resolving things with a partner. Instead, it comes from resolving things within us and allowing us to move forward from there, okay? And so that's what I wanna talk about, is how do we move forward, how do we deal with a breakup when we're dealing with emotional dysregulation, when we're dealing with uh, rejection sensitivity dysphoria? How do we move forward? So let's pretend for a second, okay? Go into a, a moment of contemplation. Let's pretend that Susie has just been broken up with uh, by their partner because their goals weren't aligned long term. Susie might feel like she needs to change her long term goals and, you know, make severe adjustments to um, her life to be able to avoid the emotional overwhelm associated with being broken up with. But perhaps instead she needs to look within herself. Oh, it's so cheesy, but it's true. (laughs) What resolution can Susie make? to move forward. You know, does she need to shake that ass in the club and start hooking up with a bunch of people? I wouldn't recommend it, but hey, Susie's wild. (laughs) Well, if the reason for the breakup was that there were unaligned goals for the future, Susie needs to come to a recognition of what her personal goals are and why those are more important than resolving the relationship. It's a lot easier to move forward emotionally when we can process and agree with the reason for the breakup. And that's in the case that we are not the ones in the control of the breakup, which as a side note is so hard. We love to be in control. Control is comfort. When we're not in control of a situation, that shit's scary. It's, you know, it's not nice and not nice. (laughs) But let's say it's more complicated than that for this situation. Let's say that their goals were almost aligned but just slightly didn't align. 
Maybe they are working towards the same things, but in a different timeline. Maybe the partner wanted to break up because they were moving quicker in their life and with their goals than Susie was. That becomes a lot harder to manage, to deal with, and to seek resolution for within ourselves. This might be one of those instances where it's just gonna suck for a while because you know there are few internal resolutions that we can come to here so what steps could we take to try to find an internal resolution um, and instead just work on surviving through the breakup that shit sucks how do we survive it <laughs> firstly feel your feelings i know it is easier to bottle it up push it down and then explode one day um, but I'm giving you full permission to sit at home watching Gilmore Girls eating a family size pack of chips and guacamole and just crying your eyes out. You're allowed to do that. And it makes sense why you would want to do that. Breakups fucking suck. <laughs> Sometimes that desire to push our feelings down comes from emotional dysregulation, right? Because we're trying to avoid the emotional overwhelm in that moment. And so shutting everything off might feel easier. But long term that becomes a lot harder to manage and deal with sometimes the best way to process your emotions is by talking to somebody else whether that is a therapist a family member a friend um, a coach a, a a wall talk to somebody or something about the situation get it all out there um, maybe making it clear that you're not actually looking for active advice and you just need to talk about it that can allow us to verbally communicate our emotions and validate them so if combating emotional dysregulation requires us to feel our emotions does combating rejection sensitivity dysphoria require us to face rejection yeah kind of it does <laughs> especially with a breakup there's no running away from the feelings. There's no running away from rejection at that point. It's, it's, it's very possible that our brains could be 24 seven running on loop about the breakup. I'm sure you felt this before. I know that 16 year old Haley really felt that. It was like I couldn't do anything without thinking about the fact that I had failed in a relationship. But what if we started a new dialogue in the same way that it is so easy for us to spiral and become so overwhelmed with our thoughts because of our fear of rejection, we can also do the same thing for positive emotions and exciting things. That's why we've become so hyper fixated on interests and you know positive things. It's hard to make a shift from a really negative situation to a, to a positive uh, space, but we're gonna try to do that together. So let's start this dialogue and try to work through it together. But if you're not currently going through a breakup right now, and this is like a preemptive conversation for you for yourself, you can use this same type of tool for anything that you're struggling with is opening up a dialogue with yourself to you know, find a positive shift in a negative situation. So here are some questions that I want you to consider. First, in what way have you grown or learned new things in that relationship? There's no way that you didn't learn anything, right? Maybe it was a shitty lesson that you learned, um, even if the lesson was learning to be alone, right? Like in my last relationship, when I got out of it, the biggest lesson that I needed to learn was that, holy shit, I need to know how to be independent because I don't know how to do that right now. What did you learn from that relationship? Next, how have you changed since the start of the relationship? Even if it was a month, two months, whatever, what shift was made within you in that time, even if it was very, very minor. Um, for myself in my last relationship, I realized that I was a completely different person by the end of it and not a person that I liked. I was isolated, I was avoiding my hobbies, I was depressed, I was anxious, I was super insecure. I had all of these issues that I didn't necessarily have in the same way at the start of the relationship and those were a reflection of what that relationship looked like. And finally, the question now to round this all out is what purpose did that relationship serve in your life? That's a big question, so I'll ask it again. What purpose did it serve in your life? For me, the ex of mine that I most recently had, even though it ended with an arrest and I had to go to court and there were a lot of there was a lot of trauma associated with that relationship, I learned so much. First, a positive thing that I learned from that relationship is I became more confident in the bedroom. I was very, very shy and uncomfortable with myself prior, but I learned a lot of confidence there. 
great thing that I learned that I was able to then take into future relationships and whatnot. The second thing I learned is what my minimums were. What was I willing to accept in a relationship? I know for a fact I will never get in another relationship with a person like the guy I was last with because it was so awful. And so now I'm moving forward with this new mindset of, wow, I deserve so much more and I will never allow myself to be treated in this way. I learned so much from that relationship. And you know, now reflecting, it's nearly been a year since that last relationship, I am the best version of myself today because I learned so much more about respecting myself, what I deserved and you know my values and that came largely from leaving such a horrible relationship. So the purpose that it served for me was teaching me what I deserved. It taught me, you know, what I needed to accept in a relationship. It gave me my minimums, which I didn't have before. So it served its purpose. Um, so I'll ask you again, what purpose did that relationship serve in your life? And now that it has had that purpose, it served its purpose for you, what's next? Oh, how fucking cool is it to think about it that way? What's next? It served its purpose. It did what it needed to do. What's next? I mean, obviously, there is still sadness. There is maybe anger. There are all these emotions tied to the breakup. And in no way am I meaning to, you know, take that away from you. You're allowed to feel those things still. But I'm challenging you to consider that the relationship served its purpose. What's next? For me, it was learning independence. And I did that. A year later, I fucking love living alone. And I'm going to continue to live alone for a while because I love it so much and I want to continue to do it. That relation served its purpose. I feel like I gained what I needed to gain out of it and I can move forward confidently. I don't feel guilt about that relationship. Even though there were many times that I should have left earlier and I should have you know, put myself first, but I didn't do it then because I needed to learn the lesson the hard way. It served its purpose. How cool is that? Now, you know, I think we can collectively post breakups, shake our ass in the club together like Susie did. <laughs> So that is my advice for you today about breakups and ADHD is, you know, considering what other alternative things are going on with you, such as emotional dysregulation, such as rejection sensitivity dysphoria, and reframing your mindset to suit something a little bit more positive, even though that's fucking hard to do. And I know that it's fucking hard to do because I had to do it and it fucking sucks. I will tell you that. But anyways, if you are at home watching Gilmore Girls eating a family sized portion of guacamole and chips, I feel ya. I feel you. I'm sending you love. If nobody has told you yet today, I am proud of you for everything you're doing for yourself. And uh, rock on, baby. That's it for this episode. <laughs> Talk to you guys next time. Peace.